Let's talk about how narcissistic and toxic people use texting to manipulate you. I'm Lise Colucci, and I'm here to help you with understanding and healing from toxic people in your life and transforming your life after being with narcissists. So let's talk about this texting thing. I think most of us have dealt with toxic texting in our life. We have had someone do this to us. If you've been with a narcissistic person or if you have a narcissistic parent, mothers in particular, they use texting in special ways to get your attention and keep you on the hook and keep you feeling guilty. So let's talk about that. Toxic texting. Texting is a means of communication, right? It's a way of saying, hey, what's up? And someone else replying. It has a natural flow of back and forth. And every person has a natural flow of back and forth depending who they are. So you get to know someone's texting patterns, right? You get to know how they are, how they respond, whether it's, I have friends who don't reply, I have friends who do reply. Neither of those are toxic, okay? Here's the thing though, when someone is using that to manipulate, it certainly becomes toxic. So narcissistic and toxic people will use texting to keep you paying attention to them at all costs, 24 seven. They will use texting to make sure that they have access to your life and to control you any second of the day. Here are some ways in which they do that. So they might text you, and if you don't reply right away, they're texting you again. And if you don't reply right away to that, they're texting you again. And there's a constant bombardment of texts text, and the constant questions of why aren't you answering? I guess you're not listening to me, I guess, blah, blah, blah. And so they will attack that way. And you become afraid to not reply the second you see their texts come in or they have you on the hook through the trauma bonding and the grooming and all of that. So when you see their texts come in, you rush to answer because you are already conditioned within the relationship to respond to their needs immediately because that's how they need things to be. That is the nature of supply. So constant texting is one thing, okay? Some people just text a lot. That's okay, that's fine if that works for you. Thing is, if you say, hey, I can't answer all these texts right now, they won't allow you to set that boundary. So it's not just the constant texting, it's the constant texting without the ability to listen to the boundary of that's cool, text as much as you want, but I can't answer until I have time, right? No. So they're doing that to make sure you're paying attention to them. Another thing they might do is not text at all. So here's the opposite side of that. They might not respond to your texts. They might not text you, they might ignore you for days and not text you and keep you sort of ghosting you and keeping you on the hook, but keeping you at a distance so that you start chasing them. That is also supply that gets them what they need. It also gives them a really easy way to get it. They can just ignore you. They don't even have to put in any effort. They can completely ignore you and you get to where you start chasing them because you're like, why aren't you answering me? What are you doing? Are you disappearing? Those of us with any anxiety about abandonment or anything like that are going to feel especially triggered by this and are going to have a response and it is toxic when someone is manipulating you that way it's all to control you guys it's all to keep control of the relationship the texting relationship and the in-person relationship here's another thing people that will only text you people that will not meet with you in real life if you're dating and someone won't meet you but they want to carry on a long conversation relationship type thing through text something is off about that they are hiding something they are avoiding something something is off this happens a lot to people i talk to people all the time who have this happen and they're confused by it you do not know a person through text you can say anything in text people have text personas people can lie through text it isn't real life we have to be careful the way we interact with people when we're texting them then we don't know them when we do know them and they want to only text there is still something going on what are they avoiding and why don't they want the in-person communication okay and that's more peripheral people in your life or someone who's trying so here's the thing a lot of people will do this texting only thing for a while and then you you're with them in real life and they're not who you thought they were Texting with a narcissist is often about interfering with your day in order for them to have control of whatever it is you're doing in that moment. They'll want to know where you are and who you're with. They will stalk you basically through your texting. They will keep tabs on you and control of you, or they will lie to you and do other things 
through texting telling you they're somewhere and then you have no idea what they're actually doing. But the thing is, it's unwarranted. You're not out there doing anything to hurt them or harm them or cheat on them or lie to them. They're doing this because they're trying to control you. They're not doing this because you've set up a situation where they should have fear or anxiety. But then what happens is then the opposite happens where we start trying to keep track of them through texting and through, so through other means, right? Using our phones and then we become watching them. It's all about them. Do you get it both ways? It's about them. They will use texting to bombard you with criticism. If you are separated from them, if you're parallel parenting with them, if you have a parent who is a toxic person or a narcissist, they will use the texting to criticize you, to put you down, to guilt trip you, to shame and blame you. And they will do it in a way that even if you showed someone what that post says, it's going, you're going to react to it. And so then it's going to just look like an argument. When you have a toxic person that you're parallel parenting with, I've seen this so many times with people, they will often just have the most extraordinarily long word salad texts that make no sense at all, are all over the place, full of criticism, full of judgment, always criticizing the other parent for something they're doing wrong in parenting, even if it's like using the wrong jelly on the peanut butter and jelly or whatever it is, stupid little things that they will come up with to criticize you. And they twist it in such a way that in text, somehow in writing, you're following it with your, with your reading, right? And you're following it with your mind and so you get wrapped up in the drama of it and you get wrapped up and you start wanting to defend yourself or you start feeling like they're right or you start feeling like they're going to use this in court against you because it's in writing but the thing is the whole thing is a bunch of nonsense and what they actually want the message they're trying to convey the question that they have are buried within this word salad text so with that you guys you have to read through these texts Find if there's anything in there that you have to answer and simply answer that. They will use text in such a toxic way because if you're standing there in person, you wouldn't, you'd tune out. You wouldn't listen to the word salad or you'd engage with one piece of it. See, they have an audience when they text. They have a captive audience. They can state as many things as they want within that text. They can go on as long as they want. They can ramble and talk forever. They can go in every different direction without anyone interrupting them. Because if you just text back, they don't care. They just keep texting. They don't have to hear anything. They don't have to respond to a human face. They can just keep going. And so they use these texts to basically be toxic to you. Don't engage in them. If you have to, the best thing is get off text with a toxic person who you are no longer with. Keep it on a parenting app or something where you can just open it when you want, read through what you want, to what you need from it, and then throw the rest out in your mind and keep it off your daily, keep it off a place where they can come at you any second of the day. Because another thing I'm gonna talk about and the final thing here right now is when they use text to keep you from sleeping and they text you all night long and they text you at inappropriate hours and they text you important things in the middle of the night or they text you things that make you engage anything that makes you engage in the middle of the night so that you will stay up and give them focus and basically they're sleep depriving you being that is one of a narcissist's number one favorite things to do to people from what i see i don't know if it's number one that is a highly desired thing for narcissistic people is to keep people awake i don't understand that one but it is what they do so anyway if you're dealing with a toxic person in texting let me know what you're dealing with what are you experiencing? How do you handle it? Tell me some other ways in which narcissists are toxic in texting situations. There's a whole lot of them. We could just keep going here. But we're gonna end now. You guys hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. I will talk to you guys next. If you need coaching, group coaching, or peer support, check out the info in the description of every video. And I'm Lise Clucci, and I will see you guys next time. Take care, bye-bye.